Yo, this SV Twist, the hood blogger, man. Y'all already know how I carry it. Man, shout out to everybody, bro, that been rocking with this content. I had to redo this skinny me, John, because at the end of the day, I was reading the paperwork from off of, you know, the, the last body case that he was fighting to which he was never convicted on. You know, that video made it to 1200 within like four hours. But at the end of the day, bro, like, you know, I can't put nothing up that's not proper. I'm not going to leave that joint up just because of the views. So for those of y'all that might have been wondering, that's why that video was taken down and I'm redoing this one. But they're getting straight into this joint. It's like this, bro. Skinny me. AKA Biggie with the weight off. AKA the hottest in the rulers. Man, I'm going to keep it a stack, bro. Like I said on the last video. When Skinny Me came to the scene, it was different. Like, OBH, they was already lit. They had the city in the palm of their hand. And I'm going to say it again, as I said many other times, I looked at them as the modern day state property. And what I mean by this is, no, they wasn't in videos with Jay-Z. No, they might not have had made it into the actual industry. But I mean, as a group, as a unit, as carrying it for the city, as bringing attention to the city, our city has not had as much attention on it as much as it did when OBH was, you know, moving. When OBH had their full squad before the indictments, before the arrest and all of that stuff, can't nobody argue the fact that they had Philly lit. And not to discredit nothing that's going on today. The drill wave and all of that, yeah, it's moving. But one thing that is lacked from the drill wave is the originality of Philly. And that's not no shots being thrown, it's just a fact. Back in the day, we had always had, Philly always stood out. You could never get a Philly rapper mixed up with a New York rapper. A Philly rapper was never mixed up with an Atlanta rapper. You could never hear a West Coast rapper that sound like none other than a West Coast rapper. And it's like this around the whole world, not just Philly, but you know, the sound of music had just changed. But with OBH, they had, they all had their originality and they all had different unique flows. But when Skinny Me came to the scene, he came at a time where AR Ab was trying to put on the whole OVH. The main artist that really has stuck out truthfully was Dark Low. He was like the biggest artist, even though it was a lot of rappers in OVH that was hot. He had the star power. When Dark dropped something, you know, people was on it. But eventually, once Skinny Me had came, Skinny Me had took the torch. He took the limelight. He took the attention. People had gravitated to him. During the time of Skinny Me first appearance, this was at a time when Ab and OVH, they was going through it with Dream Chasers and Meek. And it was a big situation because it was things going on behind the scenes, but it could have really got messy. But we seen Ab drop these vlogs, bro. We with the dumb-ish. And on one of the vlogs he dropped, that was the introduction to the world of Skinny Me. Skinny Me stood out. From that day on, he came on there, he talked heavy, and people saw the respect that Ab had for Skinny and the respect that Skinny had for Ab. We already knew about Murder Gang, but before Murder Gang, it was the body snatches. So Skinny Me actually wasn't new to the rap scene. He just never had a chance to get the, the light shed on him. Philly knew about the body snatches and Philly knew about the Murder Gang. But with that collab, with Murder Gang and OBH, it would only take things up to the next level. Eventually, Skinny and a few members from Murder Gang had differences. So Skinny would just go straight and rock front line with OBH from there on out. Skinny would have the law of attraction. You know, people was real tuned into him. 
They just loved his, you know, his body energy, his image, everything about him. He was never the most vocal rapper in OBH, but he had all the other characteristics that just fit perfect with being a part of OBH. So time goes on, dropping music, they dropping interviews, skinny me stock is boosting them. Then you had a situation with Reezy and all of them where they had the battle and everything. At this time, the city was turned all the way up. We see skinny me, he drops a video. He's sitting in the back of the U-Haul truck. And in this back of the U-Haul truck, he telling people like he on the Young Steve. He was letting people know he was on the run for a body. And he also understood that the perception that he had, it would be a difficult case to fight. Now, time goes on and then we see a video that's posted on Instagram of him getting ran down on by, you know, the homicide unit. They was all deep out there with the vest and everything. And he continued to talk heavy while them, cuff, them cops were still putting cuffs on him. It's at this time, nobody knows exactly what happened. They just know that he was on the run for a body and he got arrested for it. Now, Ab and all of them was home at this time. These are like key factors right here that people got to pay attention to. Ab and them was home. But Ab and them was already under investigation by the FBI. They had already picked up Dark Low Man Taz. So when Taz started getting upset, which that's a video of his own I'm going to drop. But once Taz started getting upset because he felt as though he wasn't getting bread. He was trying to reach out to people. And most guys that's from the streets that got anything close to the streets, they don't want nobody calling a phone from the feds, bro, because you will definitely can easily get linked to the situation. So Taz start, you know, giving the information that he gave. Now, you know, Ab and them is all booked. So when Skinny went in, he knew he had the support from AR as far as if he needed extra bread on his books, if he needed, you know what I'm saying, extra lawyer money, if he needed to make sure that his son had this or, or that, he knew Ab had him, but they locks up OBH and them. Now, at the time when Skinny went down, what they was going off of was two things. And one of the things was not enough evidence. One of the things that wasn't enough evidence was a video. Now, the video that they had, the person face, they couldn't see the person face, bro. They could not see the person face. Now, if I'm not mistaken on the video, they had a guy that was wearing a dicky suit and like a fitted hat. It was a witness that was on the scene. He was an armed security guard. And when the cops came to the scene, that guy gave a statement and said that he saw the shooter. The shooter was 180 pounds and he was dark skinned. Now, when these cops pulled up to the scene, there were no other witnesses. This person was an eyewitness and he told the cops the shooter was dark skinned and weighed around 180 pounds. Now, down the line, we would come to find out that that witness that was an armed security, a citizen, for some reason, they never used with that guy statement. You know what I'm saying? They never used his statement because automatically, once they had cuffed Skinny Me, that case wouldn't have stuck. That joint wouldn't even have made it past preliminary because you got somebody that was an eyewitness that's given a direct description of somebody that nowhere fits near Skinny Me joint. So, remind you, by the time Skinny Me gets locked up shortly after that, OBH and all of them is locked up. Now, OBH was hot. We got to admit that they was hot. Like, you know, them, them folks was on them. Taz gave the, the statement. Once Taz gave the statement, that had just put the icing on the cake. So now you got the letter boys involved. So it was a guy named Sherman Williams. This was the guy who life was taken on that corner. He was riding the scooter. Now, when he had got his life taken and everything, like I said, it was only one witness there. It was nothing else that they could pinpoint out for Skinny. So the other evidence that they had besides the, the security guard 
and besides the video footage was a phone that was recovered now this phone that was recovered is the biggest thing that they use to connect skinny me to this and i think this is a key factor that a lot of people left out now you can drop your phone in a heartbeat somebody can have pictures of you in a phone the phone that they recovered they couldn't prove that it was skinny me but the detective saw skinny me pictures in there so at the time obh was already taken down so the fbi was already in control of that case now i don't know if y'all noticed but he had did an interview and he had spoke on the feds coming in the courtroom they was looking at the judge and stuff like that so they was applying pressure to them like this guy right here he's a part of obh he's a part of ab and them. if you a part of them and something pop up you automatically you guilty at this time it's nobody that could have had ever got arrested from obh that they wouldn't have made sure that they found them guilty so you got the fbi that's pressing the state it's to the point where when skinny me did get sentenced if they if the state would have dropped that i can guarantee you he would have got that case picked up by the fbi and if not that one they would have tried to find something to pin on him because they was that hot so the guy who got his life taken was friends with skinny me and it's real crazy because his brother was in a is in the same situation bay he also got arrested for you know taking somebody life that was their friend that everybody from their hood and everybody that knew him was saying that he didn't do that. They just pinned it on him because he was powerful. He was impactful. He had status around his way. So now you got Skinny Me sitting down and, and he fighting the body. If y'all notice, he was doing interviews before trial and even after the verdict of trial. But the interviews that he was doing before, you could see his energy was up because the average person would know it wasn't enough evidence. But the question is, did he know that that detective had covered, recovered the phone with his photos in them? So like I said, with that security guard that had gave a statement and said the dude was dark skinned and 180, they chose not to use that. What did they choose to use? That detective that got the phone went and found somebody that was in jail and put the pressure on him. Now, the person that was in jail was in that area at the time when it happened. So the detective nine times out of 10 did a situation where he was trying to put the body on him. And the guy was like, it wasn't me. And then the dude, the detective pulled the phone out. Well, like, well, can you identify him as the shooter? Cause I don't think it's you, but we believe that this guy's the shooter. The guy said, yeah, that's him. Now they didn't even use that guy or bring him in court or nothing like that, but they used his witness. He ended up becoming a star witness, not the actual guy that was there. That was a security guard that gave a description. Now the dude that was locked up he had told the cops he told the detective like yeah the shooter had on a black hoodie and jeans another piece of evidence from somebody else said that the shooter had white jeans white shirt and jeans the vi the video on the camera the dude had on like a dicky suit and a fitted cap it was like real crazy where it was to the point where the evidence was so mixed up and so washed up that it should have been dismissed but another thing that they used was the rap lyrics now this is where it get dangerous at when you are a rapper and you from the streets and then when you do get on these platforms and on your music videos and you making sure you tell people that yeah everything is real everything is stacked you know you just got to be careful with that like we've seen the locks talk the streets all day every day but we never saw them making sure that people knew that yeah what i rap is real you know what, what this is you know what i'm saying like and, and kiss might not have never even had a parking ticket but look at how long his career was able to run talking that street stuff he still had the respect still had the credibility that's the danger of music today because a lot of rappers back in the day people was calling them fake and they was calling them this and that to the point now where the rappers that's you know got waves they want to make sure i'm not just a rapper this stuff is true and these are the things that you know can kind of hurt you now they used his rap lyrics in trial this was not a first time thing we saw it happen with hollow man t may we've seen it happen with still we've seen it happen with bucks 
from the Shadas, Drop Squad. Now, still in Bucks, their cases was corrupted also, and so is Hollow Man's. That's why also that Hollow Man video got pulled down because I speak to Hollow Man folks, and you know the detective on there just got indicted for forcing false statements you know, and making all this fake paperwork and stuff like that. So they working on his appeal again, and it should work in his favor. Just the simple fact that the person that was on his case is indicted now. He got like 50 years or something like that. Like now you got Bucks where Bucks judge was corrupted. You know what I'm saying? It, the, the courtroom was corrupted where they was forcing people guilty verdicts. They was forcing it on the jury putting pressure on them. Same thing with still, I think still DA or something was, was a dirty DA. Now you got skinny me with this detective. That's a dirty detective because he's telling these people that he knew skinny me since he was a kid and he could look at the video and know it's him by his characteristics. But like skinny me has said, if you could look at somebody, if you claim you knew somebody since they was a kid and you saying you know somebody off their characteristics, how come that wasn't said till three years, three, four years after you saw, he was the original detective that was running the video. So why three, four years later, did you say that you know this man because of his characteristics? Now, y'all seen shows like Power, y'all seen plenty of other shows. And I'm using these shows as examples because a lot of people might not have witnessed this in life. But when you're connected to a group, and this group is hot from the feds. And one of these people get arrested and charged by the state. The feds do come to these doggone detectives. They do come to them. They do put pressure on them. And what they do is they put pressure on them and be like, if you don't handle this, I'm going to handle this. And what the state don't want to do is they don't want to let that conviction pass up. And then the, the, the feds come and pick you in, and then, you know what I'm saying, slam you. You know, these guys get paid and bonuses and stuff like that if they can get people that got high status. That's why this detective said he was like the head guy at J Street. You know what I'm saying, around 29th and J Street and all that. So Skinny Me had the eyes against him, and I know a lot of people look at him and you know, they, they, they judge them and, and they also see how like Abin them was moving. But once again, it was the law of attraction. Ab been moving like that for years and nothing never happened. If Ab wasn't moving and talking how he was, OBH wouldn't have been able to get where they was at. Cause it's a million of rappers that's hot in Philly. We could think about it. Think about how many rappers is hot, but they don't got star power and star power come from different things. So when it comes down to the conviction, just before they found Skinny Me guilty, it was altercations in the courtroom. They start cutting Skinny Me, uh, you know, family support down. They had cut it down to 20 people. Then they cut it down to 10. One of the juries came in and said that they heard that, you know, one of Skinny Me folks talking about they was going to do something to the, to the judge or the DA or something like that. And you know, the jewelry is not even supposed to be around people, family members and stuff like that, but they let that fly. And you know, they was chopping people from out his courtroom because they knew they were going to railroad them. That's why when Skinny Me had got arrested and stuff like that, they didn't do too much big stuff on the news. Like same thing with, you know, AR. When AR got found guilty, they wasn't putting it all over the news like that. You know what I'm saying? It was the blockers and stuff, you know what I'm saying? Covering what happened. Yeah, so once again, it just was a, you know, another unfortunate situation. Um, any person that was like, you know, a lawyer or familiar with law, you would know that the case is crazy. But like I, like I said, I think one of the biggest things that got him was that detective getting his hands on whatever cell phone he had his hands on. But what I don't also understand is if he found the cell phone and you're looking up pictures, you know, it was never no ballistics at all ran on this case. So they just wanted to crucify him from the rip. They wanted to, you know, make an example out of skinny me. And we seen after skinny me and OBH had went down a lot of rappers from Philly, they was getting locked up and you know, it, it just it's just real crazy out here, man. But this SV Twiz the Hub blogger, 
y'all already know how I carry it. Salute to the real. Stay tuned then. I got some more heat drop and I just had to redo this joint to clear it up. But y'all already know how I carry it.